It's diesel drift school. Oh my god, yeah. No, his caliper is legitimately on fire. Go get some water. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Absolutely stunning day once again in Pennsylvania. We've had this, like, kick-ass streak of gorgeous weather, and man, I'll tell you what, it just does so much for the soul. Feeling that sun on the skin just feels absolutely outstanding. You guys can see that my white trucks got demoted out to the street because, well, Ron Burgundal is just such a big personality. He needed the entire space to hang out. And honestly, you know, they're kind of honoring the fact that he's only going to be with us for a very very short amount of time. Guys, there is literally a week left for you to get your entries for this truck. I know that you guys are all so excited and trust me, I am extremely excited as well. Not only because of the fact that you guys are pumped about this giveaway, but I get to find out soon from the sweepstakes company once this giveaway closes forever indefinitely on the 21st, who the actual winner of this truck is gonna be. And as Drew Smith reacted to winning the 2006 LBZ, the first giveaway that enthusiast has ever done, God, the reaction and the experience and the memory and everything was just unparalleled. I'm not gonna lie, we set the standard high, but we're talking to Ron Burgundy here, and I know whoever ends up taking this thing home is gonna love it. We are down to the final week, guys, so don't waste any more time. Grab your entries while you still can, because honestly, it could be any one of you. Don't ever doubt the chances, and as I had mentioned, guys, you are not competing in a massive sweepstakes here. We have considerably less entries than all of those other massive sweepstakes that you're seeing across the internet, those real big ones that got massive. We aren't that. So just remember, may the odds forever be in your favor. We are actually not starting our day off in the dually. We are going to start our day off today in the Minimax as there's a series of tests that we have to run it through as we explore different trailer options. <laughs> What a great day it is to cruise around in our nice new leather seats. Guys, I have absolutely been loving this swap. It has been so worthwhile. It was one of those things where I was kind of having a hard time justifying spending the money on the seats, but I'm telling you what right now, it was so worth it. I am, I am just absolutely in love with this truck, even more than I was before. Now, being that it feels like a nice LT3 on the inside, the one thing that just doesn't give it that complete feel is the audio system in here. Being that I drive this truck and I enjoy driving this truck a lot, I need some connectivity. So, so I have a question for you guys. What speakers, subwoofer, amplifier, head unit setup do you recommend? I don't really want to spend four figures on this thing. I'm hoping that I can get into it for way less than that. But I want high quality audio. I want some bass. I don't want to blow the windows out or flex them or anything like that. I want to be able to connect my phone via Bluetooth to a head unit and just to be able to enjoy an ample audio experience. It is the one final thing that the driver's experience is missing in this truck. So drop your comments below. I'd like to know what you guys are thinking. I could always go the OEM route, but you don't get like the Bluetooth connectivity or anything like that. Plus you're gonna pay a premium for, let's just say some outdated technology. So let me know what you guys are thinking because I'm gonna take you up on one of your suggestions. and We're gonna improve the stereo in this truck because what is cruising without great tunes? All right, guys, and we have arrived. We're gonna need the participation of the Minimax today. The one thing that I absolutely need to pick myself up is a manual boost controller and a manual EGT Pro because this thing is just not doing it anymore. All right, guys, so we are out here today. We got the Minimax right here. Uh, we're gonna actually end up pulling this trailer ahead. As you can see, they have it hooked up to the uh, Yard F250. This is obviously not a gooseneck configuration, but it is kind of very similar to what it is that I am looking at. So that'll give you guys just a small inclination. As I was explaining earlier, this is a non-hydraulic ramp. It has rather the mega ramps. What we're gonna try and do is make sure that we can fold these ramps down and then successfully pull the Minimax up and over the peak where the trailer slopes change. So you can see once you fold this down, the ramps are gonna create an angle and that peak is what worries me the most. And of course, my worry is with the Minimax, it's a lowered truck, so your clearance is already reduced and the traction bars, which hang down pretty low. Now, I don't know how it's gonna go up and over, but today is the test, so let's get it started. So the cool thing with the mega ramps, guys, is you can just lift these up. They are massive ramps, but they are actually pretty light. And then they're spring assisted, so you see they kind of just hang out there. They're on springs, so you could actually kind of just let them down. They'll fall pretty casually. So the slope is actually not that steep. I'd say that the runway is, I don't know, call it like eight foot, maybe a little bit longer. My estimates usually suck, but this is the one thing that I was a little bit paranoid with in terms of this style of trailer, but today is the day of reckoning, so let's give it a shot.
Well, that is extremely relieving as I really did want to go with this route. So this trailer here that we're looking at, just so you guys can see, high tensile strength, big text trailer. It's a 14 pH. So this is probably roughly a 20 foot trailer. And then you get the mega ramps that fold up like so. They're really actually impressive. And what you can do is you can actually just let them fall boom, right down, and they do not slam. I did want to catch it as that's not my trailer, but then you actually get an additional five foot of deck space up here if you want to pull your cargo forward and then back to kind of balance the load a little bit. But in terms of towing with a truck, I'll probably end up running them with the Minimax down as I'll be able to close it. That truck is not all that long. So we'll be able to get it up on the deck space, not a problem. Or if we have a bigger truck, you can actually kind of throw these right into their center position here. You can throw the bracket from there to there. The bracket's not pictured and you'll be good to go. They'll kind and just stay in this somewhat kind of floating position, if you will. So I'm extremely relieved, not only because that worked, but also because it is a little bit of a cheaper option. Of course, we could go out and we could get a fully decked out trailer, but for the frequency that I'm gonna be using it for kind of my own personal consumption, for the brand, for the YouTube channel, and just basically for moving around my trucks, I couldn't really justify going out and spending, well, let's just say a lot more money on a trailer with, you know, cooler functionality. That trailer to me is perfect. It's just not a gooseneck. Now, the other one that I wanted to show you guys guys was this one right over here. This is the other style that I had mentioned to you guys. I believe this one is a 24 foot, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit longer, but it's a total tilt, kind of like the trailer that I used from Lime Ridge, where you basically grab the hydraulic control right up under here. And then of course you go up and down, you've got your whole hydraulic pump and your battery and everything like that to power it. Now, hydraulics are cool, yes, but think about having to store them and having to maintain them. They're gonna be more expensive to maintain. God forbid anything goes wrong, like the hydraulic cylinder takes a dump on you. Or storing it is, well, if you don't have an area where you have access to a cable to plug in, these things have trickle chargers on the side, then, well, you might run into a dead battery situation and you're kind of finicking around with jumper cables trying to get it powered up. But this trailer right here pretty much tilts down. This lip will then make contact with the ground and well, you pull the vehicle right up and on. So this was going to be option B if option A didn't work. But today, ladies and gentlemen, I would deem a great success because the mega ramps seem like they fit not only the bill, but the need at hand, which is very good. Now, the most peculiar part of all of this is I might actually be pulling the trigger on a trailer in this lot right now. It's actually the one that's right in front of me, but I don't know that yet because I have to go inside and I kind of have to talk about some of the details and all the other stuff involved. The trailer doesn't have everything that I need quite yet, but the dealership that I'm working with here is extremely awesome, super laid back and very understanding. And I just got to talk with them a little bit about my use case and some of the things that this trailer is gonna to need to really kind of fit that ideal picture of what we're gonna be using it for. The next day. I have a quick teaser real quick. Oh, that's all I can show you guys right now. Those are the new wheels and tires for Papa Smurf. I think that's what we're gonna call the Cummins. Papa Smurf, do you guys agree with it? I'll leave it up for debate just one last time before we lock in that name indefinitely. As you guys saw per the thumbnail and title of this video, we picked up a trailer. And I couldn't be any more excited about this day. It's been one that I've dreamt of for a very long time. Say that it's kind of like one of those goals for anybody that's an automotive enthusiast to pick up their own method of moving some of their other vehicles. We're doing just that so I can move around my fleet of trucks. And I feel like I am totally engulfed in emotion right now. It's a really cool feeling. And as you guys will see shortly, time is running out for you to get your entries for this dually. We are down to the final week. It's power hour. Do not miss your chance because one entry could be the only entry that you need to win the Ron Bergen dually. <coughs> Jeez, God, gotta clear my throat. Allergy season is upon us. So luckily everything yesterday went exactly as planned and I'm able to pursue what my initial intent was and that was to avoid the hydraulic trailer. Plus it is going to be just a little bit less maintenance as well. Now, I have not officially tried to pull on a longer wheelbase truck with traction bars on the trailer, but my gut tells me that there shouldn't be any problems like the Daddy Max, for instance, where it has a much longer wheelbase, the traction bars are a little bit longer. There might be a little bit less room. And if there is, then there are very easy workarounds to that. So now currently none of my trucks other than this one have a gooseneck. And as you know, this is the most recent addition to the fleet. So it just happened to work out really well that this one already had a B&W hitch installed on it. So we're gonna definitely put it to good use. Dudes and dudettes, welcome back to MGS Trailers. And uh, well guys, there it is. Yes, it is white. Are you surprised? Are you not surprised? I don't think any of you are surprised. So we are about to pop the cherry on one. The old Dodge for the first time and for the first hookup on the new big Tex here, which obviously I couldn't hold out on you guys. That 
looks official. Really, 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 really official. And the official first time light check. Yeah, we're good to go. Side markers on, that one's on, that one's on. Alright guys, well I know that we haven't gone over the information on the trailer yet. That is only because at LRA there's something that's about to go down and I didn't want to miss it because it would be some epic, epic content for you guys. But here we go, pulling out for the first time. Oh my god, I forgot to do something. How could I be such an idiot? We have to do that right now. We cannot, we cannot not do this. Cummins owners, I know you guys know what's coming. No pun intended. Oh guys, I have not done this yet since I've owned this truck and that has been roughly about three and a half weeks time. I did it. That was the first time. Well, you gotta do the other side now. Oh, I just literally whacked myself in the head with the moose mirror. Uh. Well, it's all right. What's humility if you don't embrace it? They're just so big. They're so, you know, moosey and masculinely rammy, and now they're off. Let's uh, get some adjustment going here. We are moosing it up, boys. The only way to do it in a Dodge Ram. There's some tow haul on here. Wow, this is insane. Oh my goodness, oh whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's definitely a view that uh, takes a little bit of getting used to for somebody that hasn't towed a gooseneck before, but I'm okay with that. I'm definitely okay with that. So I know that you guys are absolutely dying for the details. I have about a 45 minute drive home. Well, actually we're gonna stop at LRA because I have a special surprise for you guys. And then we're gonna go into details about this white beauty here behind me. Real quick, I had to say behind the wheel now for about 25 minutes and uh, wow, it is literally so smooth. It's ridiculous. Like if I didn't have my moose mirrors up right now and optimum visibility, it's like it wouldn't even be behind me. Really, really a testament to the towing improvement over that of the standard bumper pull. Already I feel it, we don't even have a load. So this this is Sam's LLY, he built this thing for towing. It was actually just recently down at Logan's shop. Logan Lewis built the transmission on the Mini Max. Logan went through this thing, it's got an upgraded turbo stack. It's got the traction bars on it now. It's got upgraded injectors. It's got a 12 millimeter pump and well, it's got some tires that I haven't really seen that much attention in the past. So uh, Sam basically approached me this morning and said, hey, I've got this wicked idea. It involves me roasting my tires off of my LLY and it involves the Daddy Max too. And well, let's just get to it. One of you guys is gonna be taking that thing home soon. Got a little bit of heat in them tires right there. There is so much personality in the lot behind LRA. It's actually pretty ridiculously awesome. Think he's going for round two? Yeah, I was really scared I was gonna hit you. I couldn't see you coming out of this. <laughs> like, we well, didn't. Thanks for not running me over in my own truck. It's diesel drift school. Oh my God, yeah. No, his caliper is le legitimately on fire. Now it's not. No, no, it is. Holy crap. It's still, no, it's still on fire. Can you see it? Oh no. Broken a little bit there. Yeah, we might want to get some water. Go get some water. Smoking. Oh, it's going down. All right, it's out, it's out. Sam, it's out. Oh my goodness. Smoking! Wow! And that, kids, is why I need to be careful doing power brake burnouts. Oh, well, I guess this is the real test, the Daddy Max. Look at the width on that, that's crazy. At least we know that she fits. That's a really good sign. Flying colors on the traction bars, which is good. Oh no! Oh no! We sacrificed these things already! Well, I guess, uh, guess I didn't think that through. Looks like we're gonna have to take advantage of your advice, Sam. <laughs> oh no. Wow, they're pretty soft, huh? Wow, look at that. Just One. look at that. Sticking off like two and a half inches, three inches on each side. Okay. And boys. That's a wrap. 